So you basically have your tools of statistical analysis or your branches of statistics. You have your descriptive parts. Then you have your inferential. So they actually follow from each other. So for you to be able to do proper inferential statistics, you need to, to do proper descriptive statistics. And that's just description, describe. So in fact, in even some of the codes or packages, they use the word describe and they will give you the output. What, if you are working with typical data, what you want to know is the typical values that will describe the data. So your descriptive statistics are basically typical values. And they come in uh, numbers or typical quantitative measures. Or they can come in graphs, plots, uh, pictorial representations, you know, uh, histogram, bar charts, pie charts, all those ones. And without going into, into the statistics part, which measures of numerical values to use or graphs and plots depends on the type of data that you are working with, whether it's a quantitative data or it's a qualitative, in some sense, categorical. Okay. When it's numerical, there's also a distinction between continuous and discrete. Okay. So whether it is in a continuum over several divisions that are possible or continuous, and normally you have to measure them instead of counting, which will be the case for discrete. So count and measure. You have to measure with a tool because of the several decimal places that are not possible for your eyes to see. And depending on that, you will choose the appropriate measure of description as well as the graph that you want to use. So when it comes, so let's start with the descriptives. So when you have a typical, say, continuous data or qualitative data, let me make this simple plot here. There are, I think, about four parts of the data that you have. You have the center, which you can represent by mu. You have deviations from the center. So this is your standard deviation to the left and standard deviation to the right. So So that is deviation around the center, which you, you may call the mean mode or median. Okay. Now, beyond the center, there are the ends. Okay. So those are excess of your standard deviation. So when the deviation stretches more and more, you get to get tails, tails for the data. Okay. Now, so we have one, the spread around the center, that's two. We have the tails on the ends, so that's three. Okay. Now you can also stretch the tails further. Not you stretching the data, maybe stretching even further. So we can have an excess of the tails, which will now affect the height of how the height behaves. 
So we have a third one, which is height. Okay. And they have different names for them. So for the excess of the standard deviation is usually called the skewness. And you realize that if the, the data does not stretch beyond the standard deviation, there will not be any skewness. So your skewness can be equal to zero. I will come, we will come back to that shortly. And if the stretch also goes way beyond, we have what we we'll call ketosis, which will affect the, the height. So if you stretch it longer and longer, the height will come down. Okay. If the if you squeeze the height, it will also go up. So there are at least three different types of height that we can get. We can have a height that equates to get those equal to three, and you are going to have. Another one where ketosis is less than three or greater than three. So for this, we call it because it will approximate the normal distribution, which we'll talk about briefly. So we call this one the mesoketic distribution. If it's greater, it's leptopathic. And if it's less than the so realize that the ketosis is not exactly a measure of the peak. It's actually a measure of the tails because the tails that will determine the peak. Now, all of these things are important because you may want to know the nature of the distribution of your data. Because for you to do inferential statistics, the distribution of the data is important. The reason is that, the, one of the reasons is that there are two main inferential statistics that you may do. One of them is the parametric, which is based on a distribution. And the other aspect is the non-parametric, which does not require a distribution or it's not limited by all the specific constraints of a particular distribution, whether the normal distribution, binomial, polynomial, the, the log normal, Laplace, or the other distributions. So if you know that your data is normally distributed, then you may apply a parametric distribution to it, parametric application to it, or otherwise. And so while going through all of this, there are hints to you about the distribution of the data. We know from basic statistical knowledge that when you have the mean, the mode, and the median being equal, then the data is normally distributed. If your standard deviation, if you're all, if 99.7 of your data lie within three standard deviations from the mean, then that is normally distributed. If your skewness is equal to zero, it's normally distributed. If your ketosis is equal to three, it's normally distributed. Or you can conduct tests, specific test of normality to decide. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is the idea of excess ketosis excess ketosis and we'll see it in the code i'll show you so excess ketosis is basically the ketosis value that you get for any of your data minus three and that is when you are attempting to compare with the normal distribution so let me write normal distribution. Let's say X is normally distributed with some mean and standard deviation. 
or variance, whichever you like. So if you are comparing your data with the normal distribution, your kertosis value that you see will be excess kertosis. Normally, the output will not indicate it's excess kertosis, but you have to be aware whether the value you have is excess kertosis or not. Okay. So that's one thing you want to know. So apart from that, so th those are the descriptive measures. You can have different plots, plots that can tell you about the distribution of the data. One of them will be a histogram. So histogram for continuous data will look like this. And what will happen that you will draw a typical cumulative distribution curve around it and check whether they are skewed, they are peaked more than enough or not. And always you have to realize that the plots only give you qualitative evidence, qualitative evidence. Or interpretation can be subjective. That's why we always need to add America test to it to confirm. But it may, there may be a plot that two different people see at, see them as skewed, then another person doesn't see it as skewed. But you can always confirm that based on uh, a test. Another common plot that is used for describing your data in terms of distribution is the QQ plot. So it's basically quantile and quantile plot. plot. So this is how this one works. You have, say, an empirical quantile, and you have a theoretical quantile. So the theoretical quantile is normally distributed. So, so it's a normal distribution, the theoretical. The empirical is the distribution that is coming from your data. And there's a 45 degree straight line across. So, and that is the normal one. So you want to compare your data against this normal one. So what will happen is that, what, under color, near under color, yeah. So you want to you plot your data. like this, you want to know how your data matches with the theoretical normal one. And for your data to be normally distributed, you would think that you want most of your data to be on the line instead of away from the line. So if you, if you look at the blue and the red lines, the, line, the blue is closer to the normal distribution than the red one. Yeah. So that's also a qualitative measure. So you need to use a numerical test to confirm that. So at least we can do these numerical measures and we'll do the, the QQ plot. When we get into the graphical session, we can look at other plots, the scatter, the box plot, the histogram, and the rest.